morning. Welcome to our liturgy. Masks are not required in the church at this time. However, if you are more comfortable wearing one, please feel free to do so. Our Eucharistic ministers will be masked as the Eucharist is distributed. Please stand now as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather uh, this uh, morning, we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today are from the book of Genesis, from Paul's letter to the Colossians, and from Luke's gospel. The readings today emphasize the uh, strength and efficacy of prayerful advocacy for those in our world who are in sin, those who are broken, those who are wounded, those who are in need. So as we gather, let's call to mind moments when we have failed to lift up our brothers and sisters uh, in, their, in their, uh, their need and ask now for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sins so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on further towards Sodom and the Lord remained standing before Abraham, then Abraham drew near and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there are 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. 
Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted, Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10? He replied, For the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Lord, Lord on, the on the day, day I, I called, called for help, help you, you answered, answered me. me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, Lord on, on the, the day, day I, I called, called for help, help you, you answered, answered me. me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called you, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, Lord on the day I, I called, called for you help, help, you answered, answered me. me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me against the anger of my enemies. You raise your hand. Lord, Lord, on the, on the day, day I, I called for help, help you, you answered, answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, Lord on the on day, the day I, called I called for help, help you, you answered, answered me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. Even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. 
and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The starting point for the readings this weekend that deal with the power and the efficacy of prayerful advocacy right, is, is the second reading, and that's the reading from Paul to the Colossians. And here's the point that Paul makes, which is so poignant for us when we talk about this. Paul says, once upon a time, you were dead. That's it. Once upon a time, you were dead. More to the point, you were dead in your sin. Your transgressions had a hold on you, clasped to you, and you were a goner, kaput. And God intervened. God raised you to life with his son. That's the starting point for this entire reflection on, on prayerful advocacy. Because without that starting point, you and I can lose a little passion, or more to the point, a little compassion for the brokenness and the needs of others. The readings today are insistent that when you and I take someone else out there, anyone else out there, and we lift them up, something will happen. And if you and I are persistent in that, if we're persistent in that, we'll see it happen with our own eyes. Take every cotton-picking, broken, sinful thing in this world that you and I want to be different. Anything, any topic, any person, any place. Call it to mind. When we look at it, we get downcast, our stomach turns, and we're convinced that 
Gee, that thing is ruining him, her, them, society, culture, us. Call it to mind. What's the thing? The thing that's sinful. The thing that's a, a transgression against God and moral norms. Or the weakness or the fragility or the wound that's holding someone or something back from being what God has visioned them to be. Do you and I believe God can raise the dead? Do you and I actually believe God can infuse something into him, her, them, us that regenerates? And I suspect for a lot of us, we've thrown up our hands and said, he, she, they, us, it, just too broken to be fixed or to be better. I'm no dummy. I know the history. I see the trajectory. This is only going to one place, hell in a handbasket. So we start with our starting point from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Once upon a time, you and I were dead. And God worked with that and raised us to life. The ability for that to happen comes through the Holy Spirit which is why Jesus lands at that point at the end of the gospel today. When he's talking about the prayer, he offers the Lucan version of the Lord's Prayer. He gives these wonderful stories about people going to a friend's house at midnight, demanding three loaves of bread and what that interaction looks like. But at the end, he lands in a very particular point, which is if you who are wicked know how to give good things to people who ask of you, including your kids, how much more will our Father in heaven, our loving Father, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of us? Because that's the secret sauce, the Holy Spirit. Call to mind what we say the Holy Spirit does in our world. The Holy Spirit was present at creation, took chaos, hovered over it, and produced order. The Holy Spirit is the one that Jesus breathes upon his apostles at his resurrection and conveys both peace and the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit is that agent working in the world that forgives sins. Our ability to forgive sins comes from the Holy Spirit. We say in the creed that the Holy Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life. If you and I want someone in this world to experience new life, we call upon the one who gives it. That's the Holy Spirit. We call the Holy Spirit the gift of consolation, the consoling power of God who reminds us of everything that Jesus has taught us about God. The point of all this is that there is no sin, no transgression, no weakness, no wound, so embedded into a person, place, or culture that it cannot be revived, healed, or transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you and I doubt that, Circle back to Paul. You and I were once dead in our sin. We had no merit, no way to claw ourselves out of it. But God intervened. And God raised us to life with his son. He continues to do that today. And now he's asked us to be participants in the ministry of his son. To be that voice and face of advocacy for those in the world 
who are trapped in their transgressions. You know what they are, and I know what they are. This is the weekend to believe with some renewed conviction that God can work with that and not to throw up our hands for the particular people in our life or those issues in society and culture that we think are truly robbing us of everything that God wants for us, but to ask for one very particular thing for he, she, they, us, and it. And that's the Holy Spirit. When we call those things to mind, beg the Holy Spirit to fall upon them. Heavenly Father, this one in my life needs the Holy Spirit. Lord, our nation needs the Holy Spirit. Lord, those people, they need the Holy Spirit. That's what you and I need to be doing. That's what we're called to do, and the readings this day testify that when we do that, it is efficacious. It will make a difference. It will matter. And if you and I ever lose heart, we just say, I don't think it's making a difference. I don't see the change quick enough. I think the headwinds are too strong. Circle back to that second reading. Make it personal. And remind ourselves that once upon a time, you and I were dead ourselves. And God worked with that and raised us to new life through his son. He can continue to do that with any person in any situation through the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of a Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that the Father always hears our prayers, we offer our needs and intentions. For the church faithful, that they may persevere in seeking a personal and vital relationship with God through daily prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that this National FFP Week may provide them with resources to deepen their relationship and be open to God's will in their marriage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For musicians and those who minister through music, in thanksgiving for their help to glorify God with their talents and work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those suffering hardship, that they may know and trust in the love of God 
to seek consolation with him in his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may enjoy eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the individual intentions we bring to, to us, with us to this Mass this morning, and for Edward Kruger, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we, uh, we call upon the Holy Spirit to fall upon those individuals in our lives, those people that we know about in our culture and society and our nation and our world who are trapped in sin, who are broken, who are hurting, and we trust, Lord, that you can raise them to life as you've raised us to life. May we persevere in participating in your son's ministry and see your power at work in the world today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience, he had lost your friendship, 
you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way Taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand, and as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops. All the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever 
and F. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements this morning. First, a word of welcome to any of our visitors or parishioners who have been away from the parish for a while. We're happy to have you back with us. Our parish is currently participating in the annual collection of school supplies for Seton Center. Parishioners may bring supplies to the Narthex through next weekend. Next weekend, there will be a second collection for the annual Missionary Plan of Cooperation. This year, our Missionary Appeal benefits a school and parish in Uganda. As you'll read in my bulletin column this week, uh, the missionary, the uh, Send Every Year, could not get his visa this year, so Father Klein is making the pitch instead. So that will be delightful. Okay, so he has probably crafted some wonderful pitch here for about the Ugandan mission, so look forward to that next weekend. Eucharistic Adoration is held in the church on Sundays following the 11 o'clock Mass until 9 p.m. And lastly, our choir director, Carol Harris. And if you only come to the 730 Mass, you've probably never met Carol because the choir never is at the 730 Mass. Anyway, she's been at Thomas More for nearly the last 30 years. She's done uh, ministry as a choir director here in the diocese for 50. Uh, she's retiring this summer. Uh, so we're encouraging parishioners to sign some thank you uh, cards out in the narthex, um, thanking her for her uh, time here at Thomas More and uh, throughout the diocese. So um, anyway, there, there are very few opportunities we get to honor people who uh, really give their lives to ministry in a particular way. Um, Carol is one of those, and we've been blessed here at, at Thomas More. So if you get a chance to, to sign one of those cards out there, uh, it would be great. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.